This is gold in the form of chum. Give it up for my friend Chum Oh, that's a nice sound. Uh, welcome on into the Chumming It Up podcast. I am your host, Chum. Sitting in the producer's booth is Andre. Andre, I we, I need to admit something to you. I never released yet last week's episode. I know. That's what I, I got, needed to talk to you about. I got very, very busy, and then oh, I listened okay. to it. Yeah. I listened to like a clip of the audio, and I went, is it worth spending four hours editing? What the fuck am I doing here? What? What? You just, <laughs> is this just for leisure now? No, now we're releasing this one. We will release this one. Well, yeah. Listen, last week, and that's on me. We'll, I will time this out better where we have like clear time to record where we're not coming off of like... We might have to make that a Patreon cast because I made a special... Oh, well, so that's what I was going to say. Okay. Is Andre did make a special guarantee. Do you, would you like to put it on here or should we make it a Patreon cast? Uh, that's a moment that you get to make the decision in three and a two and a one. All right. I'm going to do it here because it's, it's pub for Wet Hot Dad Bad Summer, which is your comedy show. And... Six o'clock at the Abbey and De Pere before the show. We'll be pre-gaming, and if you come, I'll buy you a picture. Any person who says that the Chumming It Up podcast sent them, right. Andre will be buying a picture at the Abbey for you between the hours of six and seven o'clock. Yep. Um, That's right. At the Abbey. Yeah. What Does your show start at six or 7.30? Six or seven, sorry. Or Starts 730. at 7.30. Starts at 7.30. Okay. Doors open at seven. Come on in. Get a drink. And sit down. at the Green comfy. Room in De Pere? It's at the Green Room in De Pere. Okay. Um, and the event is also on the Facebook. That's where you can buy the tickets. So, uh, yeah, that's what's happening. We're very excited for June. What's the date? June 10th, Thursday, yeah, June 10th. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, and, and where? Green Room and De Pere. That's right. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, yeah, a lot of cool things happening. And between that and then also this summer, be on the lookout. I'll be hosting trivia all summer long. And then also another comedy show or two over at Barrel 41. So there's good things abound for the people. We're famous. You're famous. <laughs> Maybe, may just maybe. We're getting there. Just maybe. Um, I'm yeah, gonna keep so, saying we. Yeah, no, it's we. Yeah, yeah it's we. Right. It's we. And we're going to Austin in uh, hopefully soon. Yeah, and June. It yeah, might maybe be, potentially. Might be, yeah, I think. Been been watching prices. You know, I've been dibbling and dabbling and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. taking a look and mm-hmm. you know smelling and stepping and all the adjectives you can do. Um, okay. <clears throat> Where would you like to start? I'll give you three options. We can start at a uh, uh, something borrowed, um, something blue, or, uh, or, or something completely different. You just pick from those three. Um, hang on. I got to look. I did have one. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know, we're in the announcement segment of the show. So why don't we, so we'll start there with the show. Like, okay, shows are coming up June 10th. Get your tickets. Uh, if you need to reach out to the Instagram or the Chumming It Up page, we'll talk to you where the tickets can be bought. Number two, um, Patreon. Okay. Five bucks a month. Real easy. Extra episodes. You get extra episodes, two extra episodes a month. Plus anytime we shoot any like additional content, like me versus my dad in pickleball, I'll release a shortened version, but the extended version will be out of the Patreon. Lots of cool stuff. Well, I, but our goal is to make good content that everybody would like that you're willing to like, Oh my my God, I'll, I'll chip the guy one cup of coffee or like, you know, like less than a chick, chicken sandwich at Quick Trip. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in once a month so that this guy can continue to do this and eventually quit his job and, you know, not have to do this anymore. I think uh, we might have to do some recording when we're down in Austin, like kind of like a vlog or something like that. No, 100%. Yeah, yeah. no, no. That, well, that's so if you're if you're watching enhanced video camera quality. Yeah. Are we right? Huh? Look at us moving up in the world. Shouts out to my uh, sister. We've uh, we've we've mended bridges and yeah. she has allowed us to uh, get some better infrastructure into the Tuesday Tuesday catch up whatever. Gravy Train Productions Studio. Right. Speaking of which, now an LLC company, GT Productions. That's when it was official. Yeah, I mean. GT Productions now an incorporated Wisconsin company that does um, that does uh, uh, comedy shows. Uh, it's uh, podcast revenue uh, freelance video editing and 3d uh cad drawings and for, tax evasion and tax evasion yeah. it is an offshore uh, um ho- stockholm yeah 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 stockholm whatever it's an offshore uh safe haven for businesses um we are not working with any sketchy characters. There are no sketchy planes that fly to sketchy islands. We're much more in the digital age than that. It's very progressive. Like we'll hold anybody's money. We listen, we yeah. want 
Oh, yeah. This is designed for the rich people that are all rich. Like, it's not just rich white people. Like, we have a good, diverse group of rich Asians, crazy rich Asians. We've got rich black people. We've got rich Muslims, rich everybody. Because I'm not, this, we are the most progressive money laundering and tax evasion scheme that's ever come out. And we accept Bitcoin. And we accept Bitcoin, Dogecoin, any sort yeah. of uh, NFT. Is that, yeah. it's NF- a non fungible token? Yeah. Is yeah. that, is, is, so, is, well, I'm not, I hate this pot, the podcaster trap of talking about NFTs, never doing it. Right. But is it, is oh, that what it is? We could accept cur- uh, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, yeah, it's essentially one and the same. So, it's called uh, 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 the crypt. That's a, it's it's the crypt. Okay, it's an offshore safe haven for anybody invested in the cryptocurrency. Doesn't matter what you are. You could be transitioning. You could be whatever you want to be. Okay, doesn't matter. We'll accept anybody. It's the most inclusive tax evasion. The only people who aren't allowed in are the IRS, baby, and that's just that's on God. Okay, we fear one thing and one thing only, and this is the Internal Revenue Service. Right. Right, and that's it. Okay, so you had something for me. That covers all the announcements. Andre, well, you had, you had something. You told for me. me to get uh, topics for the pod, and I have one. Okay, so let's kick it off with Andre. Andre, give give me what's up. Well, I don't really have any delivery to a joke, and it's not really even a joke. But mm-hmm. I heard an ad the other day for something, mm-hmm. and I just had to like bring it up as a discussion. It's Canna Dips, like this. It's CBD pouch dip pouches. Does it get you high? No, it's tr- it's it is purely CBD. But that's what made it so hilarious is, man, I'm going to quit chewing tobacco and I'm going to put in a CBD pouch dip. I mean, how big of a loser can you be? Yeah, no, it's, it's something. And so does it, it refresh. Like, let me know. Does CBD do anything to you? Like, do you no. feel like you don't even like it doesn't give you like a little buzz? Nothing. Eh. Not the kind of CBD I take. Maybe the CBD you take. Oh, oh. Bloody. Yeah. I mean, that's not CBD. Sponsored by I'm, Delta 8. Right. I mean, that's like calling marijuana CBD when like, yeah, okay, CBD's in it, but it's yeah. marijuana. It's, yeah. It's, I mean. I've been taking um, like pretty heavily medicinal CBD and watching uh, or reading books. You can't and see let me my tell you, roll. Let me tell you, man, can of dips and reading a book is chef's kiss I, I just to me it was more hilarious that it's a pouch dip like well i mean listen that's that's what the cannabis industry has done though they will they're infecting everywhere they're like oh there's tobacco vapes congratulations right. you can buy oh, a yeah, pen no, with I don't illegal cbd, that, CBD like, uh pouches yeah i mean at least now it's so it meets the hicks and the druggies in the middle right like they can they it's like uh what is it the arnold schwarzenegger and then the black guy's hand like uh doing the thing and it's like stoners hicks can yeah. of dips. Right. <laughs> that's, the, that's the middle can of the handshake. Can yeah. of dips. Um, yeah, that is that's something. Yeah, that's I mean, something. it's not that funny and it's not that relevant, but it was totally random, and I thought it, the commercial was really funny too. Well, and also it plays along the, the vein that you and I like to talk about, which is people are getting rich for the dumbest shit. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to make money in this world until you like just do it. And find well, it's right. really stupid. Again, it was a hick kid and a a, a, a trustafarian kid. Right. The tr- if we talked about the term trustafarian on I've the never show, heard that. I heard it recently. It is about rich kids who are also stone. Like they're like, oh, yeah, like sure. give it back to the earth, man. Like oh, I don't like yeah. I don't play the corporate world. And then they're also just like pay like their parents pay for everything, so right. they're like trust trust fund rastafarian. Yeah. So that's basically what happened is like one of those hicks who also has his parents pay for anything. My favorite kind of hicks were the hicks who weren't really hicks. Like, and I, I coach some of them now too, where they're like, like they were talking about like all the pieces of their car and like how they're lift kidding their car. And I'm like, what do you do for work? They're like, nothing. I went, then you're not a hick because yeah. hicks work for what <laughs> hicks work for what they get. Yeah. And they'll like, they work hard. Their trucks usually look like shit. The fake hicks were the ones that grew up in great homes and decided that like Brantley Gilbert was good music. And they're like, this is, this is my identity now. Like we had a, a yeah. separate parking lot at the high school. It was called, uh, 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 I don't truck know, row. hick lot. You had truck row. We, we had did. like How the you hick lot. That? You told me about this. You had truck row. Yeah. We had hick lot. I mean, Lucy's told me about other, like her, her, you know, basically truck row. Yeah. Um, and the hick lot was like, Bunch of kids who had very strong home lives who decided that they would, you know, just hang like Confederate identify. flags yeah. out the back of their truck and drive, you know, 2014 Chevys in 2014 and call themselves Hicks. They're like, yeah. we, they would say, they're like, we're going mudding this weekend. And I'd be like, good on you. And it was always fun because now looking back, they actually seem like kind of fun to hang out with. Not the Confederate flag ones. I'm talking about the middle <laughs> ones. Obviously, I, let me, <laughs> well, let, <laughs> let me, let me put time. some uh, uh, boundaries on this. I'm saying they would always have the best parties. I'd always hear about what happened yeah, sure. at the Hick parties yeah. because they would drive out because always, well, they'd start, they'd use gasoline and start something on fire. Yes. Yes. They'd always have a big old bonfire. But number two is that they were always from rich families. Yeah. So they'd take all their, like you know, their trucks out to this family's cabin and they Farmland. would like, and they'd call it like fucking it's, 
Josh's place. <laughs> they just go get hammered there, and it would be. And, and, and I always saw pictures, and I was like, I'd always tell myself in the moment, like, I'm. I'm cooler than that. It's like, no, I'm not. I would love to. Like, that sound, so sounded nice so fun. And guess what? They all still hang out. Yeah. I haven't seen any of my high school friends in fucking years. Well, that's your fault. That's because you ditched them. You know what I mean. I have big time. I have two podcasts. <laughs> yeah. I'm a busy guy. But Hicks were Hicks were always hilarious. Yeah. No, that it is. I mean, I would be lying if I like didn't fall into that for a brief period of time. Andre's a hick would be hilarious because Andre has even a cleaner haircut you than I do. And Andre, or... Andre's fashion, it honestly actually makes me right upset. Now? No, it makes me upset because Andre gets to wear all the clothes that I put in my cart on websites that I can't fit into. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're always like a tapered jean and a nice white short. And then a ja- he always has a good jacket on. And I haven't bought a good jacket in years. I wear big black hooded sweatshirts. That's it to hide my man titties. And this guy comes up in here looking like he's from GQ Drip, and then he dripping. always yeah he, he, dude he's just straight up dripping oh. he comes in the studio and he won't get on camera the guy's dripping and he won't get on camera look yeah. at me maybe now that we have a better one I'll you know, switch now yeah 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 <laughs> now, like, wait dude if you're sitting can you sit next to me in an episode sometime soon maybe, maybe? that'd maybe. be fun that'd be a good time maybe we'll kiss too you know, what <laughs> what would you do if I was there <laughs> 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 me Lucy hates this more than anything when it, it's the emoji of the two fingers and yeah. then the, he, he, for me <laughs> He's from. I don't know. If so, I've anyways, seen that. Hicks, unbelievable. And then you got the Trustfarians, Rastafarians, who are like, "How do we?" Or someone just was like, "I know how to reach them." And cannabis people are aggressive. Cannabis. People, moms who sell CBD oil are as bad as like the. Uh, that was like the biggest thing. That was like Neutrogena. Yeah. Was that was it Neutrogena? What no, is it called? Avon. Avon. Uh, 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 Mary any, Kay. Whatever. Pyramid schemes, right? Yes, right? And then CBD oil got way up yeah, in there. I mean, oils. they got my mom to drop like two hundred bucks on selling CBD oil. I yeah. went there's. It's just. What it's, is it it's about literally, human nature that we fall into those things? Uh, because like, because they anything. sell the ideals of freedom. They're like this, Andre. Do you hate sitting at a desk all day? No shit. You're gonna be like, uh huh. Yeah, I don't really like that. And they go, Do you? Don't you want to be your own boss? You hate having a boss, right? And you're like, Yeah, it's a. It's not, it's not that good actually. I don't really like it. And then they go, How about some? You want extra money on the side. You've always wanted that cabin. Look up here at these hick kids at their nice cabin. <laughs> Don't you want one of those? And you go, we, 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 we thought about a jet ski once or twice. <laughs> and then they go, 220 bucks. You get in here. We'll give you, first we'll let you try it. So they put like fake Icy Hot on you. And you go, Don't you feel better? And it's like fake CBD oil. And you're, and you're like, yeah, my shoulder's always been kind of messed up. And they placebo you and you go, oh, okay, honey, let's, let's get invested. So you put 220 bucks down and then you post an, uh, your obligatory Instagram story that says, I'm part of something bigger now. What is this? We have special guests. Who is it? Ah, j Dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me keep going on this though. Where they go like, oh, I've always wanted a personal Jump. fight. What? Are you are you coming over too? But most likely, we're on a podcast right now. We're in the middle of recording. Oh, okay. You're on. You're live. Would you like to say anything? Would you like to say anything? Is he on the podcast? No, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> Is he on a podcast? Is he selling CBD oil? <laughs> yes. Um, All right. Uh, okay. Well, just call me back when oh, wait to free, way to freeze up in the headlights, man! You you had an opportunity to hit a hundred people. With, <laughs> anyways, you missed so, your marketing opportunity. So, um, and then they put it on you, and you're always like, "Yeah, my shoulders always hurt." And they give it to you, and you're like, "That was really good." And they're like, "Good." You know what's on the other end of this box? And you go, "What?" And they go, "Personal freedom." Being your own boss, making your own hours. They do, yeah. And they go, and wouldn't it be nice to help empower people? You're healing people. You're not only you're not only free from the life you're living, Andre. You're helping change the world. Yes, are you in? And you go, I'll give it a try. It's kind of like your Kirby vacuum. Little bit, little bit, but I mean, it's always yes. It's just it's it's asking obvious questions that are no shit yes questions. Right. And then knocking like straw man yeah. argument. Like they're like, okay, so you so you you hate your corporate job. And you're like, well, I didn't actually say that. I just said I didn't really love the and you're like, no, no, no. Yeah. This you're your own boss. That's my favorite. Girl power. You're your own fucking boss. And they would buy two hundred dollars of C B D oil, which goes stale in four months, may I add. Um, and then you just try to sell it. What and does that they, even mean? Does it goes stale, like lose its effectiveness. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough, man. And then uh yeah, you're pretty much on the hook and they will re up you and you know. I had I almost got drafted into a pyramid scheme once. 
Well, I went and sat down. I had a. I was supposed to be doing like a business class interview, and I just like reached out of an, a friend of a friend to get hooked up with this guy who's like we went to Perkins, and we were just supposed to do a business interview. So I had my questions about like what's up, like I had to ask certain business questions, like how did you get into this, what's your field, and the guy answered all those within like six minutes. We hadn't even gotten our coffee yet, and I'm like frick, right? Yeah, Sle- I mean sleazy salesman to a T came in like way too firm of a handshake, like. I mean, just a little too friendly. Like, you know those people who are almost too forward? And corporate people love them. They're like, that is a natural salesman. It's like, no, it's not. That guy would... I mean, he's a date rapist, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His brain is wired for this. So um, he comes in. We sit down across from each other. I hadn't even got my eggs yet. He's answering all my questions. And he pulls out this big orange box of uh, protein bars. It's called One Nutrition or something like that or One Love. I don't fucking remember. And he's like, you want to know something great? He's, and I was like, what's up? He's like, I haven't worked at a corporate job in years. He's like, <laughs> he goes, I get to travel around and help people better themselves while also helping the world. That's how he started the it. world. And those are trigger words for a liberal kid at like me at 21. I'm like, mm-hmm. I want to help the world and also help people be the better version. Of he's, like, he's like, you're a fit guy. He's like, I love traveling. He goes, here's what you're going to do. He opens his box. He's like, look at all these bars. He's like, I am the great test case. He's like, look at this picture. Holds up a super fat picture of it. And then he goes, look at me now. And I was like, still fat, but <laughs> but but arguably better shape. He's like, all I ate were these things for like six months. He's like, I got on their one nutrition plan. And I was like, oh, that, that's kind of cool. Like, I was like, and now, because like, I, he knew me, right? He's like, oh, you seem like a guy who's pretty fit. I was like, I wasn't always because I'm an oversharer. And yeah. I'm like, I used to be so fat and sad. You he's started like, crying. Pretty much. And he's like, oh, I also used to be fat and sad. Like chameleons me up. And so he's like, and I got on these. And he's like, I lost 67 pounds in six months. He goes, easy. Well, yeah, all you were eating were bars. Yeah, you, you were eating a protein <laughs> bar for every single meal. Yeah. Anyway, so he goes to it. He goes, and also... These founders, he's like, I've flown down to Mexico and met these founders. He's like, they are feeding. Every time you buy one of these, we create a superfood for these poor kids. And he explains this like, chem- he goes, w- and this is another sales tactic. Go way too deep on the technical side where you lose them a little bit, but that like builds credibility. He's like, so they take this enzyme, right? It's better than rice. He goes, we're sick of feeding poor kids rice. <laughs> he throws it out of there. No more rice for the poor kids. He goes, we're feeding them a- an enzyme. And he's like, and we put it together and it creates the superfood that we feed to the kids by the bowl he's like it's like mush <laughs> he didn't say the mush part but he's like when we feed it to him he goes it has all the nutrients they need an entire day he goes but we only give it to the kids if you sell these bars <laughs> it's like what <laughs> and he's like he's like yeah he goes every bar we sell is a serving of food for one of these kids he goes so it's extra motivation to do the right thing and i'm like now i'm a little tied up to their fate and i feel like i have to say yes and so he goes he goes here's where i started he goes i bought a box 200 bucks he goes i sold out of that box they gave me another one and then I got a team member. And it's like, and that team member starts selling. And that's how I started making money off their little box because I got a little kick out of it. And he goes, and then that person got a team. And he goes, and he stops. Dead silent. He goes, and he's drawing it out. And he goes, I know it looks like a pyramid. And I was like, <laughs> At this point, you're catching on. Oh, yeah. Well, it was just funny because he's like drawing out the corporate structure. And then he knows I've gotten it. He just stops. He goes, I know it looks like a pyramid. I was like, <laughs> kind of feels like, I mean, where we're heading here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so needless to say, he uh, I think I bought the breakfast because I think he was broke. And then within like two or three weeks, I think he was uh, kicked out of the Rotary or like Toast Club we were all attached to. Nice. Very interesting things. Very interesting things. Still commented on my Facebook for like the next three months. I was going to say, are you him. friends with this guy on Facebook? Or? Let me take a look. Let me take a look. I'm so, just curious, like a guy like that, like he might be dead because of those bars or he might be in ridiculous. Dude, what if he has like just a six pack? Yeah, let me yeah. look him up. I still know his name. I will never forget that breakfast because when he went, when yeah, he stopped, uh, when he stopped and was like, I know it looks like a pyramid. Like I, I, th- I was dead. Holy shit. He looks good. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> well, let me get here. This is a better picture. Yeah. I was going to say that doesn't look too good. I yeah. But compared to where he was. Yeah. Well, I don't have that reference. How old is he? I, I, I wasn't envisioning like a 30-year-old. He no, like no, 55. he was older. He, he was like 40s when we met. Yeah. Right? Seven years. He was like in his mid-40s. He was like, mm-hmm. I play college ball, all that stuff. Classic salesman stuff. Yeah, Classic right. salesman stuff. Trying to relate to you. Yeah. Have you, I mean, pyramid schemes. Cool stuff. Yeah. Much like CBD. So, can of dips. A pyramid scheme for all. Yeah. No, I liked your analogy of that. You know what's not a pyramid scheme is crypt. Our offshore tax right. haven. Yeah, no, not a pyramid Our scheme. diverse, inclusive... All parties welcome, besides the IRS, tax haven firm for cryptocurrency holders, the crypt. And normal money. We take anything. Well, yeah, but mostly crypto. Sure. 
Okay, something borrowed, something blue, or something something completely random. They all sound random. Let's go random. So random. Um, you didn't expect me to take that. No, I didn't. I yeah, exactly. wasn't ready, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, 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 random is just what's off the top of my head. And I'll tell you this. I'm watching a lot of TV. And I know I comment on TV a lot, but it's time for me to get back in. I'm proclaiming RIP Marvel Studios 2019. Really? RIP Marvel Studios as of the last minute when Tony Stark snapped his fingers in Endgame. Wow. Everything they've produced since then, minus the Spider-Man movie right after, has been dog shit. Sure. Doggy, dog, 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 dog shit. Disney-fied, ruined it. They got bought by Disney shortly before yeah. or after Endgame. Movie was already basically done. They have <laughs> Disney-fied everything. I don't think, like, I, I mean, you're a big Star Wars guy. Star Wars is probably the one series. They murdered it. I know. It's the one series that I actually do have. I've seen every single one, and I watched about, like, on a plane, I watched, like, the first 20 minutes of one of the new ones, and I just didn't finish it. It's just garbage. terrible. Hot fucking plotless right. uh, agenda spewing garbage yeah and the beauty of marvel was the release from the bullshit you launched it you're like holy shit there's a super soldier who can throw a shield through a tank shut up and dribble no i'm <laughs> telling them to shut up and make good movies i'm telling them if, if you've already went one way the character just do it and also disney has just like it's all subscription fodder they're like pay us 13 dollars a month and we'll string you along for six episodes and accomplish nothing right. i was super excited for all these shows that disney plus was putting out because they were supposed to have stake in the movies yeah effectively nothing has happened on either of them they go through their entire progression and and we end up in the same place we are there's zero stakes so it's like well then why did i watch it at the end of most movies even if someone doesn't die the rules have changed like we're, we're headed in a different direction something's pretty cool like that happens these last two shows at six episodes a piece or eight episodes a piece whatever the hell it was they're all they all blend together literally nothing happens the villain gets defeated or is gone or dies completely gone so they have no more stake in the universe what show are you talking about exactly? there is uh wandavision which is supposed to be cool and okay. then Cap uh falcon and the winter soldier okay two three very cool characters scarlet witch uh, uh falcon and the winter soldier bucky and these are three characters who are supposed to have very cool arcs both shows the main villain spoiler alert spoiler alert don't watch any further dies so they're no longer a threat in the universe sure the characters end up in the same station they've been in WandaVision. Wanda starts with no family. Wanda ends with no family. She brings them back and they die again. It's so. I mean, that's kind of funny. I mean, yeah, we, we, yeah whatever. Uh, so, but then Falcon and Winter Soldier, like, supposed to be this big old thing, but uh, 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 beginning of Falcon Winter Soldier, um, Falcon was supposed to be the new Captain America. Chris Evans passes the shield. By the end, or in the beginning of the show, he gives the shield back and says he doesn't want to be Captain America. And then at the last episode, he decides he wants to be Captain America again. So where did we go? We didn't do anything. We we went nowhere. Sure. Nothing changed. The stakes haven't changed. They're not. There's no new villains. There's no. They said that these are supposed to have big impacts on the movies to come. I feel like I've wasted 13 hours of my time. Mm -hmm. And they kept saying these are going to be dramatic, epic things. They were dog shit. Yeah. Dog shit. And anybody, truthfully, and I have like I, I and 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 I'm gonna get some disagreements here because some people just like they, I love Marvel. I've always said that they have done the best job landing the plane of anybody. They wrapped a story up with a nice bow and left it go. They're heading down a path I can't follow. They're oh, heading down a path that I can't That's saying I, something. I can't keep being like I can't keep excusing away shit You'll writing still watch and she, yeah I'll still watch them but but not with the intensity that I watch like right. all of them up to Endgame because up to Endgame you're like oh so much going on you and then could, I, I shouldn't say you'll still watch them because you're probably one bad one away from maybe just not tuning out yeah, yeah because well because listen I, I, before Endgame I could be like I am a 25 year old who watches Marvel and I like it because it's yeah. good fucking cinema I right. really like it and now I'm like I'm coming up on 27. And Marvel sucks, and now it's starting to look a little sadder. Now really, it's starting to look a little bit like... That was really depressing, to, for, just to think. Yeah, that. yeah. Now I'm looking down no, the barrel. I'm like, on the wrong side, heading towards 30, right, and I'm, I'm addicted to comic book movies, and they're, now they're starting to hurt my feelings. Right. So, and now I'm starting to have boomer thoughts, like, just give me the action. <laughs> go, give me a good writing. Quit it with the commentary. Let it play. And then I'm like, well, stop it, Hayden. But also, I'm sure there's other people, and I'm very... Right. agenda driven like i think cool have your commentary but also i also like those movies because there isn't a universe where a guy has a completely iron suit and he flies around the fucking sky throwing nukes and snaps his fingers to snap half of existence out of it see that's fantasy world where fantasy belongs okay right. i don't i don't 
need it. You don't need to deal with your problems. Yeah, that's what movies are supposed to be. They're supposed right. to be a separate universe. And uh, lately, every piece of art that's ever been made lately has, blends has some sort of it blends theme. the two worlds. Yeah, it blends the two worlds. Where it's, it's just the beauty of art is that it's supposed to be completely just. I mean, unless you're making a legit like gritty crime drama set in this universe, but like right. that's a completely different world. There's dude, yeah, the world would never hero. have those kind of issues if you have Captain Fucking America and the right. Hulk running around. They would, there would be the world has changed. They dropped yeah. a fucking those city out of problems. the sky. I mean, what are we talking about here? Okay, so that's what my random is that I'm I am this close to putting the dead stamp on Marvel and the Chum It Up podcast is going to call Marvel dead if they don't freaking wow me with the next movie that comes out. If that Spider-Man movie doesn't knock my little drawers off, I'm probably going to be done. I'll be waiting for the day. And I would effectively retire it. I would uh, renounce all my claims and titles. I would say <laughs> I'm done with Marvel at that point. But right there on the hot seat. They are on like they're on watch. Yeah. And the reason this whole spurred it is because I've been watching on my free time. I get like a little, I get like an hour a night to to do stuff, and I watch Game of Thrones. I've been like yeah. kind of just getting back into it because I really like the show. Starting at season yeah. one, and you're just gonna disappoint yourself. Never has there been a bad tur show ever in the history of shows ever, 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 ever. I'll argue till I blue in the face that seasons one through six of Game of Thrones are better than any TV that's ever been made or will be made. Okay. There's also never been a more colossal fucking shit pile than the last two seasons and what they do to the characters and a great story. And uh, 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 f- for that, I hate them. Has anyone ever, I mean, in this, you know, I'm not, I'm not a TV person, movie person, entertainment person. I, joyless, which some would say. Dude, yeah. I honestly think that Andre's a robot, and when he goes home at night, he sits down and no, unplugs. He unplugs himself, and he's because mm. <laughs> I go, Andre, have you seen this? He goes, No. I go, Andre, have you listened to this new hey, song? He goes, I, I don't listen to music. You're watching a show I suggested, so very true. Andre, did, I, I'm I'm obviously doing a, a little bit. embarrassed I'm to say what the name of that one. Was. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, yeah. fantastic. It's, I'm already it's digging it. I like movies or I like shows that are like kind of bouncy. Yeah. Like I told Lucy the other day that Marvelous Mrs. Maisel feels like a musical sometimes. It does. Like the way bit. like the dialogue happens is like, and then you go, and then. And it like bounces yeah. back and forth. And I just love that like playfulness because it keeps you like the, the pulses up on the show. Right. But back to this topic, never a better six seasons of show. Yeah. And I've been loving every second of it. And I got very sad the other night because I reached the end of season six after like months of watching. And I got very sad just knowing that like from it's basically not worth watching the last. Yeah, I was going to say, have you considered just cutting it off there? Or is yeah, it, I'm watching seven. It, so. I'm watching seven. I won't watch eight. Um, I won't watch eight because it's just so bad. But it makes me so sad that they couldn't bring it home. Or like, I hate that money like kind of drives that kind of stuff because there were so many good ideas and people that were willing to do it. I'll tell you the situation. They were offered three more seasons after season seven. They were offered to go ten. And that would have wrapped the story up. George gave them. George is the writer who wrote. He said so the first six seasons are all written down. Like they're in thousand page books. Yeah. And so that's easy material to adapt off of. Right. Grab right. the best plot lines. Run them through. Seven and eight were just given a storyline. He said, here's where I'm taking the books. You know, you got to fill in the plot. And they're terrible writers. But there's so many people who are willing to get in on it. Right. And these guys were offered $200 million from Netflix and a Star Wars trilogy. And so rather than see this out through season 10, because they retired and the expectations continue to build, right? Because right. the stories are coming to a head. They went, let's just get to the end. We know what's supposed to happen. So let's get there. But when you do that, when you rush to the ending, because you know where you're supposed to go, when you rush to the ending, there's no payoff. Nothing makes sense. All the character storylines are screwed up. Yeah. And it just made me sad because... Even for those actors and actresses, like they really sunk into the role. Like you're like, holy shit, this show is so yeah. good. I bought the books; they're gonna be here this weekend because I'm like, I should give myself the chance to film it in my head, like right. to do it in that way. But just bummed. Yeah, bummed. That's too bad. But I will. I, don't know I why do. You'd do it to yourself again? Because, dude, I'm I, Andre, and I tell you this. I'll tell you this on camera now. You need to watch it. Yeah, I know. You need to watch seasons one to six because you will why, text me the at thing multiple is, times. Why, like, why? why would I watch something that? I know is going to be just, but that's, so that's what the argument is that right. it killed rewatchability. You right. can't now well, convince someone to watch you, it. You talk about money. And to me, that's what they gave up a ton of money by making it terrible because HBO subscription would still be going up at yeah, this point. Right. The reason that like the office people are, st- I mean it, it, the entire series, even after Steve Corral leaves is a great show. They, and, cause good writers took it home. Yes. Right. And so it was just, it just, it lasted and 
now staying power is a huge thing peacock has them because they paid a ton of money and people want and now peacock is like a halfway legitimate sort of streaming service just because they have the office yeah a show that like it's not like right. oh you know, like game of thrones right. still a big attractor on apl of, but i mean those are very different shows obviously you know but, but it's still it's can you sink your teeth into it and just watch and can it? i watch it 25 times yeah and i'll tell you what i, I before season eight came out i watched game of thrones three times yeah, I remember. three times i would go through it because it's just so good there's so many layers it's just like such good storytelling and now you and now it's tough to convince you to go and do that because you don't i don't want you to do that to yourself but it's just a good show right and I, you know i would say this I've been you said money, bad. money do it money does anything money money got the snyder cut made yeah, right. Money no. should talk before the window closes on reshooting that dog shit season. And George should take the hit. I mean, it's never going to happen. In a perfect yeah. world, George says, I'm too old. I'm 71. I'm never going to be able to finish the two books I promised at 3,000 pages. He, prom- he promised two books, 1,500 apiece. He should say out loud, I am too fucking old. It's never going to happen. How about I tell you where I want the story to go, and then I work with the team of writers who've helped me write these books, and we do the show again. We do seasons 8, 9, and 10 now, and we do it the right way, and HBO throws them millions of dollars because they make millions of dollars. There's never been a show more culturally hated than the ending of Game of Thrones. Yeah. I mean, comedians, uh, football players, all the way to you know, like the most devout fans of nerds that were just like, you ruined it. You right. ruined it. That was the one show that got people to buy into like a gritty fantasy drama. Like yeah. it's so much more than like f- dragons and bullshit. It's like it's gritty, political, like killer be killed, like very pit everybody against each other. And right. everyone was like, yes, because no one was safe, dude. They they ruin they'll, they'll ruin your favorite character every five like every episode. You know, someone someone's going or someone's getting chopped. It made you feel like okay, like they really there were stakes and everything. Seven yeah. and eight, there's no stakes in anything. Plot armors abound. So that was always my uh, like. You could make an argument that that like I don't know what was it like ten weeks on Twitter where like every Tuesday or whatever Game of Thrones came out was hilarious because. It was just people complaining. I mean, just what is happening? Why is this so bad? And we excused it the first two episodes. Right. I remember. I literally vividly remember that. And I would text you even. And I was like, I'm like, it's uh, it's going to be okay. It's It's going to be okay. Because you text me like, what's all the hate on Game of Thrones? I'm like, well, they're kind of they're dropping the ball a little bit. I was like, we only have six episodes and nothing's happened for (laughs) two of them. And this same thing as Marvel. Nothing happened for the first two episodes. It's all world building. And I go, but there's only six episodes. So they better be longer, right? right? No, they're all 30 minutes and they all suck cock they were terrible shows and that's what happened with season eight game of thrones is like you build this you can't set an expectation and then just ruin everything yeah and the whole the whole notion of this whole uh subverting expectations is like a new uh thing that they keep saying which is basically we've written a story so that it should go this way and then a new director comes in and fucking smashes it with an 18 wheeler that's called subverting expectations now it's basically saying and george r R. martin summed it up like this he said if you wrote your whole book it's a mystery book and you wrote the whole book where the butler did it where at the end of the book the butler did it yep but you haven't written it you haven't written it yet. you're just hinting to it and someone right. figures it out as an author you shouldn't go oh crap now i'll make it somebody else because right. then the rest of your book doesn't mean dick yeah and that's what they did they basically said we've built it up to this whole thing where these three characters should be doing this or this should happen and it went the completely opposite direction yeah it it's so i mean to me it's funny because i didn't have anything invested in it and it's like watching oh dude i mean it's not funny but it is there are a lot of people and it, uh, admittedly i have an obsessive personality like if i latch on i'm a fan yeah. of something i get so into it i'm reading articles i, I read the news yeah and so i i got very very sad when it like wasn't as good as it could have been because we and it's same thing with star wars same thing with uh, right. you build these theories up in your head for things to be cool and then it just sucked and you're like so speaking of all those things that i know that you sorry i'm rustling no here. rustle away um <laughs> I didn't know you were going to have a beer for me, so I brought one. Hey, I'm in. Um, when was the last time you were actually satisfied with the movie? Because the way you're talking, right, or like like one of your entertainment sources, because just based on that list, it doesn't sound very good. Honestly, Endgame. We watched a couple movies. We watched uh, 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 Promising Young Woman I really liked. Okay, that movie was I'm really good. I'm talking something that you were hyped up for, that you were excited to see. Oh, Endgame. Haven't. Haven't been pleased by a, like a true uh, show. No, well, uh, Ozark, I've really liked. Okay, yeah, and a lot of but people said that. That's quarantine. Yeah, that was around quarantine. I feel like there's one other show we've watched where I'm like really was into it, but I think it was like I was watching it. Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek. Yes, Shit's Creek. That's okay. the best one I've seen. That it wasn't all crazy hype. That's what but it was, was. Yeah, and that's I guess that'd be my pushback. Is no, like something that they announced it was coming out for a year. 
you end game. Yeah, okay. then it's end game by a mile because it's like, oh my god, like it was the biggest yeah. event ever, right. and they delivered. That's good in every asset, but that's 2019. I have yeah. not been throttled by a like Last a hyped movie well, too. I mean. in you know forever. And everything that's been out is dog shit. And that's why I literally wrote as a, um, I was so mad last night just because I was like, it was obviously finishing season six and all this stuff. And then Marvel, like after watch, watching the Marvel finale, I literally wrote life is hot garbage. <laughs> so I was just so mad about like yeah. nothing, like nothing is, uh, nothing entertainment wise has tripped my trigger. I'm reading a book that I like a lot, but really the only entertainment, like, like entertainment Nerd. industry stuff I've liked has been like live performances. And even those are fucking, you got to go to speakeasy to see anybody do anything. Yeah. And most of them are weird. Okay, uh, something borrowed or something blue? Borrowed. All right, so I have a question for you. Or like, can I can I give you a philosophy? I don't know. Sure. I'm okay. Nervous now. Val. So uh, graph here for our listeners. Okay, running up the is this the x or the y axis? Y is up and down. Okay, so running up the y axis is uh, value of the object. Okay, so running up to down to up. <clears throat> yep. Okay, the uh, x axis across is time you've been borrowing slash had possession of said object. And then the line across is when you can consider it yours. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's the line I, I, that goes up. I think I might know where you're going Okay, so I have been in possession of, so uh, let's say a friend, yeah. Joe. Let's, let's call him Jacob. Jacob forgets a speaker at a house uh, oh, okay. at a wedding. Because I was thinking about this saw that's right behind me. That's mine. <laughs> that's also mine now, though. Law, <laughs> possession's not Based on this law. philosophy. Based on this philosophy. Okay, so uh, let's say Jacob leaves a uh, music box at a house after a wedding. Doesn't realize he did it. I go back into to uh, use the bathroom before we leave. I sit on the counter. I go, oh, my God, they're already gone. I should grab this so like, it doesn't go to some stranger. I grab it. it. Then I text, and I say, I have it. I'm willing to ship it. No response. So then I start to use said music box yeah. for two years. Mm. This was August 2019. Mm-hmm. August 2019. So at this point on the graph... We are 1.8 years away. Yeah. The price of this music box is $160. Mm-hmm. At $10 a month of rental fee of a music box, I now own the box, right? Yeah, you're like the bank that has now just like... Clicked. This is my asset. I've seized it. Yeah, at that point. And now, at this point, now I'm being requested to uh, 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 ship or buy brand new to send back to said person. In your experience, you yes. We you ship it? Because you're a good person, but you could fight it. Well, well, there's also the element of just not sending it at all, like just not responding, just, changing my number. Like, is it yeah. worth it all? You know? Yeah, right. This is what's gonna take you down. I hope so. You're finally gonna make it, and like, this guy fucking steals music yeah. boxes. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'll send it back. But if you're thinking about that access, like that saw, what was it? Fifty bucks? Fifty bucks? I've had it for eight months. It's mine now. Effectively, unless you come get it, well, I'm saying it is. I'm a, saying it, it's whoever's in possession of the saw. Yeah, is in a. They're they have the in, high ground, in, in an advantageous <laughs> position, yeah. right? But I'm even saying about the music box, like possessions nine tenths of the law. Like you scratch my back to get it back. Like I, what am I supposed to do? Right. I work from home. I've not, I I don't even know what a post office looks like. I haven't been to a post office in well, years. No one should go to a post office. That's yeah. Sure. We should defund the post office. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Um. All right, so you're something against me blue. on this. You think I should some I should send it back? I think you're playing with well, fire. You know I what? Don't. I was just gonna say I think you're a decent enough person, but I take that back. You can keep it. Yeah, I'm kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> All right, uh, something blue. Um, I have another hypothetical for you. Okay. We might cut this, so just in case. So Andre, I'm gonna pitch you a hypothetical. Okay. Let's say there is a uh, um, Julie. And uh, Chris, and they're married with three kids. Okay. And they're married for a while. They're married for 20 okay. years. All right. I and then they split up after 20 years. The kids are all gone. The kids are all doing Shit their own happens. thing. 26 sure. years, whatever. Who cares? Whatever. It's an arbitrary number long enough. The kids are gone. And they split up. Yep. At this point, Julie makes pretty good money. Okay. Chris makes pretty okay money. Sure. But Chris has been investing heavily in alternate forms of currency, a la c- cryptocurrency, uh, precious metals. Okay. Whereas Julie has taken their traditional route of putting it in a 401k mm-hmm. and not spending it. Sure. Julie makes good money. Chris makes pretty good money, mm-hmm. enough money. Mm-hmm. But Chris doesn't have a nest egg. Mm. They split. Mm. Do you, and they, there's no kids at home. They just split. 
Mm-hmm. Now with Chris with no liquid, no real liquid assets, and Julie with a nest egg, mm-hmm. Julie offers half of everything at a at a snapshot in time and says, "That's it." Yeah. If you're Chris, do you take it? Uh, it's not, if that's the deal if to I'm the value Chris, of about a hundred. Let's matter. say arbitrary number, hundred thirty thousand dollars. It could be five thousand dollars, and yeah, if someone's offering you half, with no questions asked. Yeah, you take. I mean, you just okay. Let's say Chris doesn't. Let's say, let's say okay. Chris says Chris says no. I want half and a monthly payment, a monthly stipend, oh. because I want to continue to live the lifestyle that I've become accustomed to. Mm, sure. So they let's say Chris and Julie go through the legislative process, yeah. and they go through the judicial system mm-hmm. and the 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 rules that they split the debts halfway, mm-hmm. and Julie will pay a lumps a, a monthly sum to mm-hmm. said person. Sure. Now. How do you feel so far? Whose side do you feel like you're sitting on? Now, let's let's argue for both sides. Chris feels not expected, kind of expected to retire soon. Chris is older than Julie, and Chris feels like he uh, maybe had his legs cut out from under him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I thought I was looking at retirement. Now I have to work forever because I chose to invest in precious metals and cryptocurrency and maybe didn't get the best bang for my buck. And Julie says, it's not really my problem. Right. I don't want to have to pay you adult child support. Yeah, the the capitalist in me says that. Uh, I mean, you take a chance on an investment, and it sometimes it works, and sometimes Correct. it doesn't. Correct. Correct. And also, I'll make my statement clear. I think that uh, uh, maintenance or some sort of like adult child support is uh, not cool. I think it's uh, you. It, that yeah, means that you someone has to pay you money to not be with you. Right. Is not a great situation. No, and yeah, there, there's some weird things in in the law there, mm-hmm. um, and that's. I'll call it an outdated law because that's meant for back in the day when the wife wouldn't work. And well, it's also meant for kids at home. You it, should pay if you if yeah. there's a single well, but you single said, you Chris said or the words Julie. you said the words a life that they're accustomed to, and that is a I believe a legal. No, it's term. basically yeah, it's a right. Big, so, like, but also you can like I'm a big advocate as a libertarian for self responsibility. Yes, I will that, never. That's where that's yeah. where I said like the capitalist in me says like right. Um, you've got two hands and two feet and. Okay. Kind of so now let's say, okay, they split it. Let's say that Julie takes on a, a large sum of debt that's a student based, uh, and it's a pretty large sum, and and that's that. Julie did that. Yep. And Chris takes on a credit card debt and pays mm. it all off with whatever he got for like the lump sum of uh, let's yeah. say the four hundred one k pays it off. So now Chris is debt free, getting arbitrarily fifteen hundred a month. Okay. Debt free, fifteen hundred a month. Not a whole lot in the bank for retirement. Yeah. Pretty sweet deal, right? Let's say Chris. How long is, does let's that say Chris is go for forever uh, till uh, till Julie's sixty five. Okay, and so Julie Julie is just just knocking on the door fifty, fifteen years. Yeah. So now uh, uh, Chris's uh, bills are Chris's bills are very similar to like what my bills are. Very modest rent payment, no sure. student loans, right? Phone, no debt. TV, no debt. Owns his car. Owns the car right outright. Okay. Old car, might have to buy a new one, but owns a car all right, 1500 a month, plus breaking in um, uh, about what I make, okay? Okay. And it's not, it's not, tr- it's not six figures, but it's just, it's, it's money to, it's enough money it's to livable. be single, single family household. Yeah. Okay. For one we got person. Julie, makes very good money, but also has saddled with the majority of the student loan debt for, let's say, all three kids. With, oh, okay. Half of, e- oh, half okay. of all their student debt. I thought cannot, you cannot, hers. Nope, cannot accept payment on any of it from us, okay. if I was the kids. <laughs> hypothetically speaking if I was kids okay yeah. so not you know not a great situation for that either yeah. because paying 1500 out also paying that bills yeah. basically almost washes them still makes more right. but not a whole lot more no but there's there's a thing called being being you know more money more problems like you just the bills are just bigger yeah they'll like, always be bigger yeah yeah. so okay now we're now we're, that's where we're at right but still bigger nest egg mm-hmm. okay then let's say daddy joe dumps on uh, uh, three stimulus checks and first one comes in, split okay. down the middle. Daddy Don did the first. Daddy Don did the first one. <laughs> first first one comes in, yeah. split yep. between the two of them. Right. Second one comes in for 600 bucks from Daddy Joe. Split yep. between the two of them. Third one comes in, only goes to one of them, but offered to split down the middle. Let's say Chris says, no, that's all mine on this third one. Okay. And Julie says, we've split the first two. Why wouldn't we split the next one? And Chris says, I filed my taxes before you did. It's my money. I'm taking it. And Julie says, we'll split it just like we did the first two. And he says, I'll take you to court. And she says, no. And he says, I'm going to take you to court for 700 bucks. 
split it down the middle. He, and she goes, no, I'll give you your 700. Just leave it alone. And then Chris continues to uh, get drunk on Sundays and text Julie, even though Julie's far along moved on and calls her evil and says he wants his money. And then Chris serves Julie, um, serves her court, a court opening to appear in court. Chris's kids text him. One of Chris's kids says, leave it alone. It's not worth it. If you continue down this path, you won't have a relationship with your son. And Chris says, so be it verbatim. And then Julie says, not cool. And then now, so hypothetically, who is the asshole? Is it the kid for giving an ultimatum on something that maybe doesn't no, apply to him? Definitely not. Or is it is it Chris for just being a little bit greedy? Is it Julie for just not giving it up? I don't know. Who is the, the asshole? The entire situation is fucked. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, if listen, if man, so I was Aaron Rodgers' contract, so, is, yeah, he's yeah. almost done. <laughs> so if I'm I was kidding. one of the, if if hypothetically, I would say I'm one of those kids, right? And I would say. I just want happiness. And yeah, seven hundred dollars isn't worth uh, uh, no, the the you know consistent bit. shit. Also, let me tell you, as a libertarian and also as just a person, okay, I've always told Lucy in the event that we we're ever to split up, she she's not owed half like or she's not owed a monthly payment to me. I'm not owed a monthly payment no, to her. It's right. not fair, right? Unless we unless there's like a kid at home, no, and we're, think, ne- we're never going to. But I'm just saying, like you know, right. it's not. I don't think it's right for you to have to pay a fee to break up. No. Okay, it's expensive enough to get uh, to go. Like you shouldn't have to pay like a. It's. I mean, I get it. It's different if like let's say let's say for it, example. Example, uh, uh, David and Maria, and um, uh, uh, David Maria. makes a bajillion dollars, and he says, "You right. stay home, you don't work," and then leave him on dry. That, then you deserve maintenance. There's a different situation. Yeah, that's. A but total- when you're two hardworking people who've had uh, ample opportunity, decades to get jobs and keep jobs, and you don't do it, it's, it's your own fault. Advocate you, personal responsibility. Yeah, you just gotta kind of. Obviously, when kids get involved in stuff, things get really complicated. But these kids, let's no, say I know. All I, I'm just saying 20, in, in general that that situation. If ever, if you can, if there's, if it's easy enough accounting to just figure out whose is what, like it should be just split like that. Like yep. at, as long as, you know, you don't want to leave anyone high and dry by any means. Like, but, but also it depends if, on the situation. If, if, if you're using you, you someone as a nest egg when to. you've been encouraged to not use them as your nest egg, right. um, don't be surprised when the silver spoon stops feeding. Like, right. can you imagine if I was like, this has emotionally scarred me and I'd like a monthly payment of my stipend because um, I was accustomed to having right. two parents who would pay me for everything and suddenly I don't and now you all owe me court ordered money to do so. So. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's just say if hypothetically it was me, hypothetically, and it was my and my parents were the ones doing it. I would say hypothetically, don't show your faces at my show. Ha- I would say hypothetically, yeah. don't call me. I'd say hypothetically, you know, no longer allowed in the catch up if you were a guest. I would. That's all I would say. That's okay. all. I, would, I mean, the, but again, yeah. right. strictly beep, 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 beep. hypothetical. Right. Hypothetical. Right. So if you feel like a Chris, if you've if you looked at the story and said I'm Chris. Maybe the shoe fits. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, do you want to do some fun news stories to wrap us up? Yeah, let's let's get this moving. Oh my god, are you like really? You, I got a you, house party. Yeah, maybe. I know you. So Andre, I, <laughs> I hate you. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's do it this one first. So, while he's looking that up, I w- we have a friend that texted us that there's he's got an open house, and I haven't been invited to a house party in probably six years. So when I heard there's a house party, I'm like, let's go. I'm fully vaccinated today. Are you really? Yeah, today was like my, uh, you know, my Biden day or whatever you want to call it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Dude, but, uh, and not to do the political, but he sent a letter. So hang on. This is actually something I want to do. How many pieces of paper does a tree make? Uh, 10,000. Does a tree make? Uh, so it would take about eight trees to produce pounds of paper. 500 sheet weighs five pounds. That's 10,000 sheets per tree. So 20,000 sheets per tree. Now, Joe Biden, in a victory lap, sent out 320 million paper. Right? That's how many people are in America? 330, yeah. 330. Sent out 330 million paper letters to let everybody know that he fulfilled his promise of giving out the two thousand dollars to these checks which he didn't just so we're all aware he gave 600 and then promised 2000 and then gave us 1400 and said it adds up to 2000 and he sent us all a paper letter that said i have now given you 600 and i've given you 400 or 1400 and those add up to 2000 thus fulfilling my promise he sent out he killed he killed how many trees andre what is 320 million hang on what is 320 million divided by 20,000 Sixteen thousand trees died to to take that victory lap. You yeah. couldn't tweet it. You couldn't put it on Facebook. I'm sure he did. I, you know what I mean. Well, yeah. No, I. 
with him. Man. Also, don't send mail from the IRS. That's what it came from. And anytime I look at my little daily digest of what's coming to my mailbox and I see IRS, I literally shit myself because yeah, right. I don't know how to do taxes. Andre, you said something so funny the other day. You were like, we remember, we remember like yeah, a meme or whatever. It's, it's, it's like, a meme, so I don't yeah. want to take the credit for no, it. No, take credit for it. So Andre wrote this sick <laughs> fucking meme, and it was uh, uh, it's I, like, it's like so the the IRS is like, so you made money last year, and you're like, yeah, I did, and like, and they're like, you owe some taxes, and he's like, yeah, I know, I do, um, and he's like, how much, and he's like, oh, uh, you have to figure that out, and he's like, oh, well, don't you know? Well, yeah, like I'm not very good at that. Don't don't you know? And he's like, yeah. And then the guy is like, well, can't you just tell me? And the IRS is like, no, I can't do that. And they're like, what happens if I get it wrong? Yeah, what what if I don't get it right? And they're like, oh, you go to jail. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, every time I say right. it, it's so true. Um, so yeah, don't send mail from the IRS to me, Joe. I, yeah. I'm not a big fanny in the first place. And so I, I don't need you running a victory lap. I'm very aware that I've spent all 2,000 of that already. And yeah. I don't need you I don't need you coming and, and reminding me what you did for me. Right. How about what I did for you? I swallowed my pride in so many family arguments to allow, uh, to vote his geriatric fucking ass in when all I wanted to do was bring my, my best friend Bernie, my best friend Bernie. And then instead I had to swallow my pride and vote for him. And he's going to tell me what he did for me. It took me more than $2,000 in pride to put the vote box not on Donnie. Yeah. Not to put the vote box on Gary Johnson Donnie. and the Libertarian Party. Gary. Gary. What's next? A license to use your toaster? That's my favorite. That's a legit libertarian debate uh, uh, video. Mm. I'll show you it next week on the episode. Right. Okay. What's let's these do these. Let's see this. No, sorry. I know you're busy. All but right. Headline party. is Bumble match ends up with U.S. Capitol rioter, un, rioter oh, under saw, arrest. Dude, that's so weird. I literally just yeah. saw this. Well, All maybe right. that's because. So according to court documents. One, uh, so uh, hang on. They've charged a Capitol rioter who was turned in by someone he matched with on the dating app Bumble after he bragged about his exploits on January 6th. So according to the court documents, one, one week after the attack, Robert Chapman told one of his Bumble matches that I did storm the Capitol, made it all the way to the statu- statuary hall. He also claimed he was interviewed by members of the media. The other Bumble user replied, we are not a match. Now, this is my favorite reply of all time. Here's the conversation to a team. Uh, this is from the person who tattled. Those weren't my questions. Those weren't answers to my questions. So we're missing some subplot. But then he says, uh, I did storm the Capitol, made it all the way to statu- Statuary Hall, then did an interview with blank, blank, blank of the Washington Post, uh, something with interview with the media. They said, we are not a match. And then he said, I suppose not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put his picture up here, but man, I mean, if it's not if it's not somebody you exactly thought oh, yeah, stormed I, the yeah, Capitol, I saw that guy. but just uh, two things. Yeah, we met. One, we were there. One, <laughs> you got to warm up the person a little bit before you drop like knowledge like that, right? Don't, yeah. It's not a stranger thing. I don't know though. If you find someone that like agrees with you, but doesn't he didn't know that she agreed with him, or he? But well, I would that, assume that's my she. point. Is like you're lo- you're it's like taking a. You're shooting your shot. You're not messing around. You're looking for someone who shares the same values as you. And let me tell you this. And this guy, if you look at him, is somebody of left-leaning going to be like, that's my kind of guy. You can like, you literally look at him and you're like, he, ri- like, he rioted at the Capitol. Yeah, we were there. I get it. Uh, yes, we were there. <laughs> yes, Andre, you led the guard, the charge to the West Wing. I remember watching yeah. you with the raccoon head. You're right, that the, was yeah, me. Was fu- yeah, yeah, it was all you. You're right. your big rider guy. Now, but you look at this guy. I'm starting to think and call me conspiracy conspiratorial that they were looking to cause some trouble they see him most likely his bio is like blue lives matter fucking yeah you know like blah, 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 and they're like okay let's just see what we can find swiped probably started an argument and then was like i bet you stormed the Capitol." and then he's like yeah i did you're, I, damn, I, right. really, you're damn right i did and then she's like police i have written evidence of this so like narc ass move yeah don't like also that. Don't tattle on yourself. Yeah, that's what we're finding on with all these people is they just like can't keep Listen, it to themselves. You guys got away with one of the craziest days right. I've ever seen in my life. You raided the capital of the fucking country and three of you got arrested. Let's, and you killed somebody. Now let's not let's not forget that you guys m- murdered a cop and you all got away with it and then you are going to brag about it. You got away with one of the craziest things. Shut up. You should all be in jail. You should all be in jail. What's so funny about it is we've all seen TV shows of like, you know, Washington DC and it's like so locked down and mm-hmm. so like CIA and like these guys just like it was basically a they walked ma- in a mall cop basically was yeah I mean, you know nothing against the the men in blue out there but well 
Like I'm also, I mean, I'm, I'm not only protect police, but also fuck police. Yeah. I, li- I live on both sides. I, of I'm, the yeah, I'm on, I'm on the fence for sure. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, here's the thing. If you get away with something that crazy, that's like when you're a kid and you like, it's like fucking, storm in the mall. I didn't go to school on Monday and be like, I threw pumpkins into people's mailboxes all weekend because right. I had kids who were like, my parents' mailbox got smashed by pumpkins. And I don't go, you're damn right. I did. I just right. went, that's crazy. That's ha ha. That's crazy. <laughs> that's all you say. So they that's basically, crazy, yeah, 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 that's crazy, dude. I'm sorry that happened. So, you know, uh, uh, so on this article, I am pro chin strap guy. Don't narc on people. Yeah. He was cool. I mean, but also talk don't break hit. Yeah. Talk, yeah. Really. Truthfully. I mean, you know, stitches, snitches get stitches. Right. That's what I was thinking of. Talk so sec- yeah, but well, that's a little, yeah, it works somewhat. Okay. Second news story. Uh, a Disney fan says wokeness is ruining the park experience. Now this is where we go against people like chin strap. Okay. So, uh, let me, are you f- kidding me? Thank God I'd screenshotted some of it. Ugh. So this guy wrote an article. I'll put his picture up here. This guy wrote an article about Disney. Um, uh, here it is. It's a office. commentary. This guy actually got a job writing for the Orlando Sentinel, and I can't get a radio job anywhere. I deserve to be on air. I would tone down the F-bombs a little bit, but this guy gets a, gets, gets a viral you know article on Orlando Sentinel. What? You don't know when you swear. That's the problem. No, I do. Mm. I do. I'd be able to. When I know I'm not supposed to, I'm very good at it. Mm-hmm. My family and I have been loyal Disney customers for decades. We vacation at Disney World every year. We take a Disney cruise every year or two. What a psycho. Who takes a Disney Dude, cruise Dis- every year? Disney families and Disney people, I think, are like hypnotized. Yeah. <laughs> I know uh, there's yeah. there's people out there. I know they it, like, can you mention like every people, year like, sixty year old couples. Their kids have long been out of the nest, and they go to Disney World every and year. have breakfast with fucking Minnie and Mickey yeah. and j- I, get jerked off by Donald <laughs> on the way to Splash Mountain. It's disgu- It's maybe honestly that's what, maybe disgusting. that's the truth about it. Maybe there's you know some Epstein Jeffrey stuff Epstein's yeah. favorite place is Disney World. So consequently, we spend way too mon- way too much money in Orlando. I hate this guy already. Have you ever like strongly hated a person just by looking at him? Yeah, I'm looking like, right at him. Yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I am strongly rethinking our commitment to Disney and thus Orlando. Dude, Disney is literally the biggest company ever. It's not going to miss your lazy eye and the rest of your fucking butt crack showing family. Yeah. This family is out there mowing footlong corn dogs, showing their ass sunscreen crack. Sunscreen on their nose. Sunscreen, sunscreen on their nose. They're the fucking, their kids are uh, grabbing each other around the waist in their Cookie Monster <laughs> sweatshirts and taking pictures when they're too old to be taking them. Okay. You, Disney Disney needs a churn rate. They got to get rid of you at some point. I'm glad they're doing it. Unfortunately, I'm strongly rethinking our commitment to Disney and thus Orlando. We're leaving the city. <laughs> There's too many liberals. <laughs> the more Disney moves away from the values and vision of Walt Disney, a noted racist Nazi. and Nazi, yeah. <laughs> the more we stray away from racism, the less I want to be a part of Disney. The less Disney World means to me. <laughs> it used to be my paradise. It used to be my paradise. I don't know. Pretty, that's basically what he's saying. Disney is forgetting that guest immersion is at the core of its business model. I forgot that this guy was in a board meeting with fucking Walt and the gang. Shut up. You're a loser. Uh, when I stand in Galaxy's Edge or Fantasy Land, oh Jesus Christ. That's what I I'm, know I'm, I'm starting a, to think this guy gets whacked off behind. Pretty much. I know I'm in a theme park, but through immersion and my willingness to set the world aside, something magical happens. Yikes. That is a dude who jerks off without porn. He said through through my immersion and willingness to set the real world aside, something magical happens. That is a scary man with a distorted <laughs> worldview. Run for your life. This is a pedophile saying it out loud. The spell is broken when the immersive experience is shattered by the real world. And boy, has Disney been breaking the immersion. It keeps going. Recently, right? Disney announced that the cast members are now permitted to display tattoos, wear inclusive uniforms, and display inclusive haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> he's a guy who goes, oh my God, I, you got Snow White as a tramp stamp. And this is the, He's losing his mind. Or she's got like faith written on her yeah, wrist. He goes, right. that is not canon. She goes, shut up, fatty. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Can you imagine he's at Disney breakfast and he stops Cinderella yeah. because she has her grandpa's death date on her shoulder and yeah. he goes, Cinderella didn't have that. And she goes, what? <laughs> I'm on day three of 13 hour shifts and Walt has a gun to my head in the back and you're going to tell me I can't have a tattoo? Unbelievable. <sighs> um, and then also the inclusive haircuts. He just hates lesbians, truthfully, I think is where he's going with that. <laughs> 
Uh, Disney did all this in the name of allowing cast members to express themselves. The problem is, I'm not traveling across the country and paying thousands of dollars to watch someone I do not know express themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Keep it up, man. You're, dude, this guy's got to be so fun to get a beer with. Fat moron. Um, I am there for the immersion and the fantasy, not for the reality of a stranger's self-expression. Again, r- rapist? Potentially? Yeah. Definitely should someone check his hard drive. I've seen I've I have seen this movie before. Yeah. And this man I think this was an potentially SVU episode. Potentially watches some things that are not great. Um I do not begrudge these people, their indiv- these people or their individuality, and I wish them well in their personal lives, but I do not get to express my indiv- individuality at my place of business. God, Jesus. What's next? It they, oh, yes! It's the next, yeah, the next paragraph is, what's next? Is Disney going to end the rule barring onstage cell phone use by cast members as an infringement on self-expression? Uh, more broadly, like many corporations, Disney has been politicizing its business. Frick. I don't remember how the end of it. It, that's the end of my screenshots. I think we've at least given this oh, enough you've attention. Given us everything we need Look to it know. up, man. Like man, uh, Orlando Man versus Disney. Yeah. I mean, dude, could, is there not a better or is there not a more veiled way of saying I watch bad things on my computer than writing an yeah. article about how you're there at Disney for the immersion, dude? He doesn't like tattoos. Okay, so let me let me clarify this for you real quick. Okay, every Disney character with uh, uh, every cartoon is a cost a big old costume. Donald Duck, massive concept. Mickey Mouse, massive costume. He's literally talking about the princesses. There's no one else there that's not dressed. Yeah, everybody head to toe in a full mascot. uniform. Yeah. Kylo Ren, that's a full outfit. Stormtroopers, you are literally talking. You probably saw a tattoo on Snow White, and you're like. I don't like it. He did. Oh my god! Can you imagine what a wildebeest his wife must be? I'm sorry, but you don't think I mean, he's talking about like just like staff? Do you? I've never been to. No, Disney he's World. talking about like characters. It yeah. ruins the immersion. Yeah, and dude, he doesn't care about the janitor. He, dude, he's the kind of guy yeah. who finishes a soda and just drops on the ground. He goes, "It's Disney. They'll clean it up." He's yeah. he, he's a fuck. But Which is true. Yes, but if you're talking about like uh uh, he's he's talking about characters that should be characters he's looking at he's got his cinderella book open he's looking for a canon version of cinderella and if she comes out in anything less than a blonde flowing wig right. lord forbid she's got a string of pink in there for breast cancer cinderella doesn't believe in it right he's like he will measure their hair he wants i mean i the can bosoms. you ma- i would love to hear him describe like a, a disney person so like, big voluptuous tits <laughs> The dwarves are horny for you know. So this guy is just the worst. This is we've all got an uncle, right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, seriously, this guy's um, no, seriously, I got an uncle. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, Ugh, cry for help, comedy. Um, yeah, where are we going with that? I don't know, dude. What a guy. What a guy. And and here's the thing: is that what viral? That he well, is so much buzz for that guy. I kind of well, want to clip this and tweet it to him. Yeah. No, we should find him they and just be like, TikTok "I want you, to, yeah, add, like, uh, you know, tag yeah. him and ask him if he wants to come on because I think he'd be." Dude, I, if we can actually get an interview with the uh, remember when Disco Bob big du- big timed us, yeah. I know. Uh, you know, it'd be great. It's a round table podcast, even by a Zoom, of the sexist Baptist pastor, Disney World Puritan, and, and Disco, Disco Bob. Bob. Yeah. Are they all bald what a too? meeting of the mind. Uh, they all have uh, varying degrees of, of balding, balding like alopecia, lo- losing their hair. They're, they're all big uh, Rogaine uh, potential users. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> that was for the people and a sneeze from Andre. A sneeze. Bless you. Bless you all. What, t- how, what time are we at? 102. We love you all. Uh, Asalaamu As- Alaikum. Um, Many thousand pardons for last week's uh, missing episode. It's yeah, on Patreon. I'm not now remember, if you the go Abbey, to... Abbey, 6 p.m., June 10th, you get a picture. Great. All right. Of the cheapest beer there. Beautiful. Hey, cool light for everybody. All right. See you guys.